uh, the polling firm, which is uh, preeminent in the world. Uh, I'm just going to briefly introduce uh, the panel, uh, and then after that, uh, we are going to present the results of the poll in summary fashion. Uh, I will then ask a couple of questions, and then we will open it all to you. I think you will find it provocative, and I think you will find that it ties in remarkably well with many of the themes we've been talking about the last few days. Rick Stengel, as I mentioned, as you know, is the managing editor of Time and Time.com. He's had an incredibly distinguished career as a journalist and an author and also uh, as a collaborator uh, in the biography of uh, autobiography of one of the greatest men of this century or any other century, Nelson Mandela, uh, at Long Walk to Freedom. Uh, Mark Penn, uh, who's been here before, of course, is the worldwide CEO of Burson Marstaller and the vice chairman of Penn Schoen in Berlin. Uh, he has advised uh, countless people around the world and not just in this country. Of course, he was uh, advisor to Bill Clinton and he was the chief strategist for Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. Don Baer is the chairman of Penn Schoen in Berlin, the vice chair of Burson Marstaller worldwide. Uh, previously uh, at Discovery Communications, and also he has been a senior advisor uh, not just to uh, leading political figures, including Bill Clinton, uh, but to many uh, uh, corporate figures as well. Uh, Rick will be first and will set the stage uh, for the survey uh, that we conducted along with time. Uh, Mark will then present uh, the key findings. Uh, Don will give a few... uh, Uh, overall remarks and observations, and then I said, I will ask a few questions, and then it will be over to you. First, uh, Rick Stengel. Elliot, thank you. Um, I'm delighted to be here. I'm always delighted to be here at Aspen. It's fantastic. It's such a cornucopia of of great ideas. It feels like one's head is bursting. Um, But what we're going to talk about today is not going to burst your head. I think it's going to be very, very Sobering. Um, We decided to do this uh, poll together because the last 10 years is a signature moment in American history. I mean, there's just no way around it. The the beginning of the decade uh, with the horrible tragedy uh, of 9-11 has in some ways shifted the arc of American history. And that's, in in the largest possible sense, that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, on another very practical matter, since every other journalistic organization is going to be doing something for 9-11, we wanted to get out ahead of the pack and do it this summer so we could uh, flavor, as it were, all the coverage of, of 9-11 that will happen going forward. So what we wanted to get at in the poll is, is just a, a very simple thing, which is how has America changed, how have Americans changed as a result of, of 9-11 and, and the decade that followed. And... Um, as I said, I think it, it, it is such a key moment in time, and the findings are, are very sobering. So um, the larger message, I mean, it, and, and Mark, by the way, it was fantastic to work with Mark. I, I think very few people have their finger on the pulse of what Americans think and believe uh, better than, than Mark Penn does, and you've been doing it a long time, and you did a fantastic job with this. And, and Mark will walk you all through the, the details of the poll, but the headlines is that, you know, about two-thirds of the people polled feel that America is in decline, that, that you know, 71% say that we are worse off now than we were at the beginning of the decade. Uh, only 6% uh, of people feel that it's better. And as Mark will talk about, it is one of the most sustained periods of pessimism in American history. Now, uh, Mark wasn't around, uh, even though he's been around a long time during the Depression, which I'd argue is it was a, certainly a sustained period of American pessimism. Uh, the period leading up to and during the Civil War was certainly not a bright spot uh, for America either, but we don't have polls from that time. But, but certainly since, since World War II, this seems to be the most uh, sustained period of pessimism in American history. And I would argue that um, it may not be temporary, that you know, we are going through structural changes in our economy. We're going through structural changes in our population as a nation. And historically, of course, we have been the, 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 the great optimistic nation, the sunny nation, the nation of a, of a city on a hill, the nation where, where we believe you know, in our fiber that 
you know, that tomorrow is going to be better than today and the day after tomorrow is going to be better than tomorrow. And that has sustained American life. I'd argue all along that that is in our DNA as a people, but I actually don't think it's in our DNA. It's something that's learned. It's something that's inculcated. And one of the difficulties we have as a nation right now is that we are not inculcating those ideas and those values uh, in, our, in, our, in Americans. And what, what the poll shows, I would argue, and we can discuss this, and, and, and Mark will go into details, is that, that we may be experiencing a, a tipping point as a nation, going from, from a people, a nation that is preternaturally optimistic, to one which is, I wouldn't say pessimistic, I'd say more realistic. Certainly the, the dichotomy that has always been thrown up between, from the moment you know, we were born as a nation, between the old world and the new world, is that the new world was this, is this world of optimism, of hope, of you know, westward flows, uh, civilization, that, that, you know, that, that prosperity and salvation actually are not mutually exclusive, as, as, uh, as the, the uh, Max Weber showed us. And, and what we're moving into now, I think, is a period where we're moving from kind of uh, more, more adolescence as a nation to more maturity, where we are looking at things in a more realistic light. Only by comparison with the, um, with the extreme optimism that we've had as a people does realism look like pessimism. But that was always the notion that the Europeans thought about us, that, that you know, when Tocqueville came here, he said, you know, Americans are, are, are so bright and so sunny, and they think everything is going to turn out all right, and we Europeans know that it doesn't always end so happily. We may be coming to a more European view of our, of our destiny, and that's one of the extrapolations from the poll. So I think that's a, that's a 